good morning students today let us start new chapter that is electrochemistry let us define first what is electrochemistry and what are the applications of it then we'll move on to the other topics of this chapter so let us see the definition see the branch of chemistry which deals with the production of electricity from a spontaneous chemical reaction and use of electric electricity to do a non spontaneous chemical reaction this is exactly opposite from a spontaneous chemical reaction electricity is generated but to do a non spontaneous chemical reaction electricity is required right what is spontaneous chemical reaction the reaction which undergo by its own without need of any external force is called spontaneous chemical reaction example your rusting of uh, iron or melting of ice is the examples of your spontaneous chemical reaction and non spontaneous chemical reaction those cannot happen chemical reaction without external energy so if it require chemical energy to perform that that is electricity is required to perform that chemical non spontaneous chemical reaction or else from a spontaneous chemical reaction electric energy or electricity one at the same electricity is generated that means electrochemistry is going to deal with these two process generating the electricity from a chemical reaction or electricity is used to do a chemical reaction so what are all these process and how that happens we will discuss in this chapter right and to happen these two process convert electric energy to chemical energy or chemical energy to any electrical energy we require a uh, redox reaction the basis for these two processes is redox reaction right what is redox reaction the reaction in which oxidation reduction happens simultaneously is called redox reaction here is an example i have written so here zinc which is solid in its solid state oxidation number will be written as zero i mean given as zero and this zinc is converting into zinc plus 2 that means it is losing its electrons and it increasing its oxidation number to plus 2 therefore i call this process is oxidation what do you mean by oxidation loss of electron is called oxidation or just remember increase in oxidation number increase by looking at that reactants you can say increase in oxidation number is called oxidation and copper you see copper is converting plus 2 to 0 therefore i call this one as reduction because copper gaining two electrons gain of electron is called reduction it gains two electrons and converts it into copper solid so it is taking two electrons or it is reducing its oxidation number therefore i call this process as reduction right here in this reaction what is oxidizing agent and reducing agent the one which is undergoing oxidation is the oxid is the reducing agent right reducing agent because this is undergoing oxidation so that the copper is doing undergoing reduction that means this is responsible for the other to undergo reduction therefore i call this one as reducing agent and this copper is called as i'll write here copper is called as oxidizing agent why oxidizing agent because it is taking electrons so that the other is undergoing oxidation therefore this is called oxidizing agent oxidizing agent undergoes reduction reducing agent undergoes oxidation okay the next topic is applications of this chapter so any chapter uh, to be discussed or to know if we know its more applications and how it is uses then it will be more interesting to understand or read that chapter right so 
First, what are the applications of electrochemistry? It's electrochemistry processes we, de we use in our daily life like anything. First of all, here I use this. This process of converting chemical energy to electrical energy is used in batteries and several instruments and devices. Even simple your cells, remote cells or watch cell or car batteries or whatever. All these processes mostly will be you, you based on this our process that is chemical energy is converting into electrical energy. Without that our daily life won't start or end right or go smoothly. So this this process is involved in, in our is, is because of the electrochemistry and not only that a production of metals metals are very important right sodium potassium copper zinc and non metals like fluorine chlorine the different other elements are also extracted you know that extracted from the crude material we will extract sodium sodium chloride lot available and from that chlorine has to be removed only metal we want sodium so we do electrolysis so that we get that metal right not only extraction for so purification of the metals also we require electrochemistry i mean electrolysis processes and as just now i said this many instruments and all we require converting chemical energy to electrical energy and it is also used in electroplating Plating means uh, painting, not simply painting, but converting directly to a coat. A coat on first copper so from uh, zinc on that, if a metal is there, on that if any metal, another metal coated we want, we do electrolysis so that it will be coated. Right. Then these processes are, uh, are energy effective and less polluting. It's very, very essential nowadays in this uh, life that uh, any process or any uh, device which produces less pollution is most most important right so these are all the applications of your electrochemistry so we're learning about this electrochemistry so based on uh, the conductivity i would like to discuss some definitions of it the based on the uh, passage of electricity through them the substances are being classified into four types based on Conductivity. Just for this sake, conductivity means you can remember pass of passage of electricity. Substances have been classified into four types. Number one, your conductors. Number two, insulators. semiconductors and superconductors and these conductors again classified into two types one is metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors I repeat based on the passage of electricity through them all the substances have been classified into four conductors, insulators, semiconductors and superconductors simply I will say conductors are those substances which allow the passage of electricity through them are called conductors. Example your metal rod, if you just I'm saying that if you heat it, you can you feel the heat at the, the edge where you are catching? That is conduction of heat we say. Electricity, even if you keep that metal rod in the electric uh, uh, holes that you can um, get the shock that is electric, I mean electricity is passed through them. But whereas if you keep a stick, if you burn the stick from one edge and catch the stick on the other edge, you won't feel the heat of that stick even though it is burning. It is because the heat, the stick is non-conductor of heat. Similarly, by the stick we don't get electric shock or anything. That means electricity passage is also not happened with that stick. 
therefore i call those substances as insulators the substances which does not allow the passage of electricity through them are called insulators these are quite opposite conductors means the substances which allow the passage of electricity through them and insulators the substances which does not allow the electricity to pass through them semiconductors these are the substances the metals are doped into the other uh, silicon germanium these are the examples which doped with the third a and fifth a elements so those are called semiconductors their their conductivity is between uh, conductors and superconductors what are superconductors by looking at the english name the name itself indicating they do they have more conductivity highest less resistance i mean less uh, obstacle in the electricity passage of them highest conduct conduction to them are called superconductors actually metals uh, at very low temperatures are expected to have super conductivity action earlier days but nowadays even at 150 kelvin also the some ceramic ceramic material 150 kelvin some metals and ceramic materials are expected to show super conductivity even you see 150 kelvin is also a minus degree celsius right even but before it was very much more minus a celsius then only it was show super conductivity but nowadays people are identifying some substances which show at 150 kelvin uh, also that super conductivity means high uh, connected conduction power so if it is in between that conductivity that is called semiconductors okay now we just let us discuss about the conductors see these words are important when we are using you should understand them right so first uh, these conductors are convert uh, are of two type one is metallic conductor and electrolytic conductors metallic conductors again name itself indicates conduct uh, those substances metallic metallic substances which allow the passage of electricity through them are called metallic conductors examples here copper zinc right copper zinc aluminum these all are the examples of your metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors electrolytic conductors are um, aqueous solutions right the aqueous solution or fused state aqueous solution of nacl aqueous solution of kcl these all also show the passage of electricity through them therefore they are called as electrolytic conductors the best examples of here are acids bases and salts these all will show conductivity so those are called electrolytic conductors all metals which show passage of electricity through them are called metallic conductors there is a lot of difference between these two let us see the differences between them the here metallic conductors means metals are involved the in the metals means electron flow of electrons is nothing but electricity right so electrons will transfer there is no ions i mean mass is going to be changed here ions are transferred therefore mass is changed right so a lot of differences are there let us look into the differences of this metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors let us see the dis- difference between the metallic conductance and electrolytic conductance metallic conductors are those which show conductor conduction due to the flow of electrons but whereas electrolytic conductors or electrolytic conductance is due to the flow of ions they can show uh, passage of electricity in aqueous as well as fused state aqueous means uh, they are added with the water they made into salt or added into water as aqueous sodium chloride we say fused state without addition of water in any state they can show a like passage of ions movement of the ions then that is called um, electrolytic conductors and it is called due to the flow of electrons electronic conductance the conductance is due to the flow of electrons therefore it is called as electronic conductance and it is called as 
ionic conductance because the conductance is due to the flow of ions and the best examples for this are uh, most of the metals and alloys are the examples of metallic conductors but non metals such as graphite and carbon black i hope you know what is carbon carbon is fourth year group element and graphite is used as a anode or cathode electrodes right but they are not metals but they do exactly similar to that of metals therefore i have they are choose this one only metallic conductors graphite and carbon black are the example exceptions where they are not metals but still show the conductance in the form of flow of electrons again carbon is not going to move mass is not changed see matter does not undergo chemical change a substance is not undergoing the chemical change or it does not involve with the transfer of matter ion is not moving atom is not moving but whereas here it is undergoing chemical change that means sodium chloride any a is moving cl is moving chemically the chemically substance is cleaving their bonds but whereas here metal is not changed here it involves the transfer of matter in the form of ions because already we said this conductance is due to the flow of ions therefore it involves the transfer of matter it involves chemical change but here no chemical change only flow of electron therefore no change in the matter and very important here is the metallic conductance decreases with increase in temperature It's, but whereas electrolytic conductance increases with increase in temperature please make a note what is your metallic conductors and what is metallic conductance and what is electrolytic conductance and electrolytic conductors in this chapter whenever we are discussing if you have any doubt you can come back and look into the electrolytic conductor or metallic conductor and what they are